You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Self-taught in criminal law and tired of seeing people getting ripped off or burned by the system is ready to talk one-on-one with you. It's not about who's right or wrong. It's who's a better liar. And now the host of Street Justice, Larry Levine. Welcome to another episode of the Street Justice Show with the Chaos Crew this Friday. What is it, uh, March 5th, March 6th, March 7th? I've lost track of time. March 6th, excuse me. A lot of shit going on in the news. Looks like it's Biden and Bernie Sanders as far as being the Democratic candidates. People are dying and being isolated, quarantined with the coronavirus. We had Donald Trump uh, contradicting the Center for Disease Control. Maybe he's right. Maybe he's not. Fox News caught Kellyanne Conway lying. A lot of things going on. Federal judge, I guess, who got a copy of the uncensored, redacted or unredacted Mueller report, essentially called the attorney general of the United States a liar and said he couldn't be trusted, which the Justice Department responded back to several hours later. So I want to welcome everyone, our listeners, 866-451-1451, Street Justice Show on BBM Global out of Long Island, New York, simulcast on PirateRadioUSA.net here on the West Coast. On the line with us right now, joining the show, we've got Holly. Holly is out in Texas. We've got Julio in New Jersey. Got Leo. Leo's joining us from uh, actually California, the Los Angeles area. Who have I missed? Hey, have Larry, I missed how's it going, bro? Is that Mark Palmer? That is correct. <laughs> Got Mark Palmer joining us from Arizona. Oh, so, yeah. A lot of things going on. Mark, uh, what what are they doing there in Arizona? Are you up near Phoenix or Tucson? Phoenix. What, what do you notice as far as panic on the coronavirus? Virus. Uh, they're rationing water and toilet paper out here. Holly told me that she was went to a Holly. Was it a Costco that you went to there in Dallas that was, was out of it, supplies? Costco, just north of downtown Dallas, in a town called Louisville, and completely out, just ransacked. Crazy. Yeah. Oh, wow. Julio, how about there no in different here? Well, well, Mark, what are they doing there? As far as well, basically, like Holly just said, for example, my wife and I have been ordering stuff online because it's a lot safer. And if you go into Costco, they've had shift spikes. They've had the police at one Costco's the other day about fifteen times. I hadn't heard about the fist well, fights. Yeah. Yep. One thing well, I also turn- I, I, yeah, I went to Walmart.com and thought, oh, I'm going to do a little bit of internet shopping so i can just go pick it up out of stock and any type of soup or campbell soup or any completely out can't there's nothing nothing wow i'm like okay julio how's it looking there in jersey well i I was actually out because you know um you know what i do for a living I, i work with um home care and hospitals and stuff like that you know people are people are losing their shit you, know, you, you can't walk into hospitals, uh, especially out out in North Jersey. Got that confirmed case in Hackensack, and then there's an unconfirmed case at another hospital right near there. So it, it's kind of crazy right now. I, I think people are panicking 
a lot more than they need. That's oh, I, I know they are. Well, nobody really knows where this is going to go. You know, it could mutate. Um, it could. I don't want to play like Donald Trump and say that it it could cure itself. <laughs> Leo, are you seeing anything out there where you're at as far as you're not far from where I am, but uh, as far as rationing or a run on any kind of supplies? I honestly haven't done uh, uh, much personal shopping for myself yet. I, I have some stuff already stacked up. But as far as uh, seeing general public, I am seeing people with masks. I did go to Costco yesterday. They were handing out hand wipes on the way in. Um, everyone was kind of just wiping their hands and wiping down the shopping carts, uh, feeling like they were doing their part uh, to, you know, help society. Yeah to prevent the virus from spreading. For those that don't know, many of you do, I own a survival store out here in Ventura County. I'm just between, like, Simi Valley and, um, I don't know, Camarillo maybe, if you look at it on a map. But I'm not even opening my doors, if you will. I am not. I've taken the open and close sign off. I've turned the light out. And, um, Are you still getting knocks on the door? Well, I am. People are calling and I'm asking, well, how many people do you need to support in this emergency? And where are you? What do you need? And I want to ascertain that ahead of time. And I tell them, all right, can you come down now? I don't want straight people just showing up, although some do. And I'm having them come in and I'm locking the door. I'm locking them in. I don't want other people coming in. I'm trying to limit the contact between myself and groups of people and the distance where I can stand a certain distance from whoever I've let in. And I've got that. I don't know if you guys saw, I got a new chow puppy. Her name's Hazel. I didn't name her, obviously, or she'd have a different name. But uh, this dog is, I mean, she's as cute as a motherfucker, but she can be a vicious dog. So I've got her behind the counter. And she is barking and growling at people and just sh scaring the shit out of them. And, you know, that's kind of what I want. I want them to come in, get their shit, and leave. And I'm um, doing that for everybody's safety. I don't need anyone to know what somebody else is buying or what I'm discussing with someone. So if you're out in the Ventura area, I mean, call me, uh, call my cell, 213-948-1069, set up an appointment, and you can pick some stuff up. So is anyone else following what's going on in uh, in Washington? Am I the only one that's following the political campaign? Yeah, I, I gave up on that because, I mean, right now with the Democrats, in my opinion, it, you know, you you got a dementia case and a, uh, and a communist that's won the Democratic nomination. <laughs> So, so, so as far as I'm concerned, neither one of them are worth the shit. Yeah. What about the hey? What about the guy on Pennsylvania Avenue? You, look, uh, what? Listen, right now I think he's the lesser of two evils. Between him and Bernie, I'd rather him win another four years. Fuck these communists, all right? Oh so my we got a communist. What do we got? We got a communist, we have a liar, and we have a thief. Is that our choices? You got a, you got a commie, a liar, and a dementia case. I mean, in a dementia case. Yeah, we're we're fucking done. Who's breathing right, into well, the here, phone here, like they're having you, sex? I'm gonna give you the future. Oh, here's you Sid. Have to worry Sid, about a thing. Sid is joining what? us. Sid Blitz, hold on. <laughs> Sid Blitz is joining us from Venice, California. Sid, give us the future. That's like he's like the Thank great you, Mozini that to used in. to be on. Uh, remember Johnny Carson would put on that yeah. hat and call himself the great <laughs> Mozini, the, the big swami hat, the swami hat. hat. We got the great <laughs> Mozini from Venice. Said so. Tell us what, what right. do we have to look forward to? <laughs> this this is what you got to look forward to. Biden is going to announce Hillary to be his VP. He'll probably win the election. He will step down in two years. Because the guy oh, can't form a sentence now. I don't think he can't you can't form a sentence now. Good. He can't tell his wife from his sister. So what do you think that mush brain is going to be in two I years? It's going to be two. I don't think he would last two years. No. And we're going to get Hillary for free. 
<laughs> and she's going to run for another four or eight until they put her in a box, that Crypt Keeper bitch. <laughs> so don't even sweat it. It's already, it's already cast. <laughs> That's you think what they're going to do. <laughs> you think Trump will walk willingly? If Trump loses so listen, the election, you know, are the oh, marshals or Secret Service going to have to drag him out of the Oval Office? No, you're not surprised. surprised. If, if, if Biden actually wins with Hillary as the VP, the minute they, they get sworn in, Hillary's going to initiate that and arrest that fucker in cuffs. <laughs> she got a vendetta. <laughs> hey, you know they found the gun in, in Epstein's cell now. Wait, yeah. wait, wait, wait. They found wow, it wow. in MCC. They didn't find it in his cell. Okay, they found it in MCC. The way they found it, it sounded like it was in his cell. <laughs> yeah, well, they say the same prison well, or jail. Oh. Well, all right. I've been prison, into MDC LA. In. I've been to other federal detention centers. I know really? that. Sid has. Sid was at MDCLA <laughs> with me. Leo, were you at MDC or MCC? Never. I turned myself in like an idiot. Nah, nah. You know what? You're lucky. I got grabbed off the fucking street by a task force. But if you've been in one of these detention centers, to get a gun in there, it had to have somebody be, you know, it had to be staff. Somebody paid staff off. What do you guys think? Definitely. Well, when, I when I was in prison and at New Jersey State Prison in Trenton, when I first started my bid, they found a gun in the prison. And people are trying to say that somebody shoved it up their ass and put it and walked oh, it sure. through like 10 metal detectors. <laughs> gotta be that is one crazy kind of ass. Larry, this is Len. I'm here. Yeah. Hey, we've got <laughs> Len joining us from Santa Clarita, California. Wait, wait, what was that? The cop that actually brought it in wouldn't have to get arrested. The cop the probably cop brought looked. it in his ass. When I was in Lompoc several years ago, serving one of my serving my tour at one of my many stops, they found four <laughs> kilos of heroin behind the fence, not in the camp, oh. behind the fence in the dentist's office at the USP. Now, how do you think that <laughs> got in there? Oh, somebody yeah, definitely somebody a all four kilos. Yeah, yeah, one at a time. I'm going to tell you the story. They would catch this shit. They would catch the gun up somebody's ass. I've told this story no before. Way. It's the story of Freddy the Barber. When I was in the federal prison in El Paso, Texas, right there on the New, New Mexico, Mexico, Texas border, I could look out one window of my housing unit. I'm looking in Texas. Another window, I'm looking in Mexico. Another window, I'm looking actually into New Mexico. Anyway, Freddie was on a gate pass, and he was getting ready to start RDAP, for those of you that know what this is, the drug program, which would have got him out early. But Freddie was working a gate pass, and he was leaving the prison to go work on the military base because the prison was located on Fort Bliss. It was controlled custody. There were the two fences and the guard towers and all this shit. Well, Freddie went out to go do his job, and when Freddie came back in, they ran Freddie through, like, you know, the metal detector you have at the airport. So when the inmates are on gate passes, this is what they're doing. Well, when Freddie came in, they had him stripped naked. And Freddie, oh, he was gay. Freddie the barber was gay, homosexual, okay? Really cool dude. Well, Freddie comes in the metal, is. comes in the prison. <laughs> And the metal detector goes off. And they're looking at Freddie and they're saying, well, you don't have anything. Go walk back through. And Freddie walked back through the metal detector like three fucking times or something. And, and it went off every time. Well, it went off. So somebody had the bright idea. Well, let's have Freddie bend over and cough. I wasn't there to see this. I heard this secondhand from somebody that was there. When Freddie bent over and coughed, several packs of cigarettes came flying out of his ass. And the Jeez, only thing, that's fucking terrible. The only thing that I could think of, God, I hope those weren't hard packs and those were soft packs, you know? That is fucking disgusting. So I hope so. Oh wait, wait, wait! Hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm cooking only, a little pot of, only a pot of chili. I'm sorry. Cigarette. That's so, a shitty smoke. A gun? Yeah, we're 
No shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what the uh, dog cigarette cigarette from Mexico. Mexico. <laughs> so what, this what gun, this alleged gun, or the gun's not alleged, but the circumstances behind this gun. No We're inmate. We're talking about Jeffrey's gun. Yeah, no, well, the gun at <laughs> MCC gun. that was found. No inmate. How the fuck you fit it in there? No inmate smuggled that gun in. Wait, ne- next they're going to say, okay, it was a forty-four Magnum. It was like Dirty Harry's gun, right? Not right. Why not a rocket launcher? <laughs> yeah, there you go, like a Law's rocket. There you go, like a howitzer. Okay. Yeah. It was staff. I guarantee you. And the staff is going to point the finger at the inmates. When Sid, well, when we were over there at the federal the, the prison, in, pushing, uh, they're probably getting ready to, to go to the table to talk about raises with their union, and they wanted to show how dangerous their fucking job is could sitting be. around doing nothing. Sid, do you remember at Safford when they had an outside gate crew there, too? Safford, Arizona. Sid and I were in that prison together also. Crazy place. Yeah, I they, wound up getting on that out, outside gate crew. Were, you didn't make the gate crew, did you? Yeah. At the very end of uh, my stay there, I made the gate crew, and I'd go outside every day and uh, basically run the garage, which wasn't really running I anything. remember that. Okay. So, Sid. <laughs> Remember how they had heavy equipment there, bulldozers and tractors and shit? Because yeah, they were developing the ground. Around. Okay. Well, <laughs> one day, like a $50,000 piece of heavy equipment, I don't remember if it was a bulldozer, a tractor, or what, something. One of those big yellow pieces of construction machinery turned up missing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now... Who do you right think now? they blame? They blame that the inmates took it. Now, there's no inmates missing, but they blame that the inmates took the piece of heavy equipment. Now, oh, wouldn't God. somebody oh, turn God. up missing? Wouldn't somebody Holy notice bullshit. a tractor with an inmate in it, like going down the road? Yeah, the only way you could move well, no. any of that equipment was on a flatbed. They, they wouldn't or, notice or, it because it was very, a pretty very the very short distance. <laughs> You know, you weren't going a long distance if you were going to drive it. Well, it no, was they, gone. They didn't, they, uh, Larry. Larry, they didn't spot it because it was firmly up Larry the Barber's ass. Well, that was <laughs> Freddie the Barber. <laughs> Freddie the Barber was in Texas, not at the Arizona prison. This they flew is funny. In because they he sent, had a perfect path for this job. They sent Freddie to the hole. Okay, obviously, <laughs> Freddie you know, lost that, it, his arm. It's funny how you're saying it that way, there, Larry. Freddie lost Freddy his with a... What's that? <laughs> you're, you're, we're talking about putting stuff on Freddie's ass, and they said they sent Freddie to the hole. I mean, the, the words are just too good. Larry. Well, okay, yeah. <laughs> they sent Freddie to the hole. Okay, they pulled his RDAP. They pulled good time. Uh, Freddie disappeared. Nobody knew where Freddie was. Well, several months later. <laughs> I was grabbed in the middle of the night. They were getting ready to transfer me, to put me on Con Air and move me. And I ended up, it was actually, it was like my fucking birthday, too. It was July 1st, 19, or excuse me, like 2005, I think. I've lost track of time. But I spent my birthday there in the hole because they isolated you before they moved you. They'd pack all your shit out just what they did. So I get to the hole and I hear somebody knocking on one of the cell doors as I walk by and I peer up and I look in the window and lo and behold, it's Freddie the barber. (laughs) Five months later, Freddie is still in the hole. Seriously. And I hear they held him there until he got released. And Freddie actually was pretty cool. Because the cop opens my door after he had put me in one of the cells. I was in there like three days waiting for transport. He said, Freddie sent you a gift. I thought, what the fuck would Freddie be sending me? He sent me a whole stack of it magazines. Yeah. <laughs> <Freddy. laughs> Freddie wanted to know if I wanted a puff, huh? <laughs> All right. Knowing the kind of shit that Freddie put up his ass, he probably sent you like a tetherball with a string attached. It could have been. All right, Len, we're going to cut to a commercial here on the Friday Chaos Crew, the Street Justice Show on 
PirateRadioUSA.net in California and BBM Global out of Long Island, New York. 866-451-1451. We'd love to hear from you. Keep listening. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Essential Nutrients, LLC, is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients, LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet, and they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. Larry Levine, self-taught in criminal law and tired of seeing people getting ripped off or burned by the system, is ready to talk one-on-one with you. It's not about who's right or wrong. It's who's a better liar. And now the host of Street Justice, Larry Levine. Hey, Hey this is Sid Blitz out in Venice, California. Welcome you back to Street, whatever this is. Oh, Justice, that's it. And the Chaos Crew and all the other pirates that are following us. <laughs> How are you? Good afternoon. Larry stepped away for a few minutes, uh, but you got a bunch of us still on here. So Larry was talking about uh, the barber with the cigarettes up his ass. <laughs> well, I got I got one better for you than that. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, oh, I, was really? doing time in the, I was doing time in the feds, and the state came and got me. They decided, well, fuck, let's gang on, Sid, and give them some more charges in the state. So they bring me back to uh, Los Angeles. And we're in the old court building every day, which is really old, built in 1929, downtown L.A. And they take us across to the Superior Court under a tunnel. We get back. And we're in a holding cell. Now, holding cell, basically, there's probably 40, 50 guys in there. And we're waiting to be released like eight, ten at a time for a shakedown. Then we can go up the floors to, you know, ourselves. So in the holding cell, you have a mixed bag. Okay? A mixed bag means you got guys in dark blue uniforms. They're general population. You guys got guys in light blue uniforms like me. That means no bond, no release, no fucking weight. Then you got guys in orange jumpsuits. They're straight homos. Then you got guys in yellow jumpsuits. They're j They're straight crazy fuckers. And they never put juveniles in there with, with the adult. Never. LA's pretty good about it, at least they use fake. So we're all in this holding cell, old, stinky holding cell, crammed in there. And all of a sudden, out of the crowd, pops one of the gay guys in orange. And he starts screaming at the other half of the room. Well, he didn't say who he was screaming at or who he pointed at. So everybody's kind of looking shifty, you know, eye to eye. Like, who's this guy screaming at? And basically his complaint was is that he didn't feel he was being appreciated enough. What was he being appreciated enough for? Well, I'll tell you. It escalated in about five or ten minutes to this guy pulling down his pants, squatting down, and he shit out 
I shit you not, at least a 30-inch roll of tobacco. That must have been almost three feet there. It was all God. tightly wrapped in cellophane, individual packs of tobacco wrapped 20 in a, in a pack inside the cellophane that long. He pulls this thing out like a fucking salami, and he starts <laughs> waving it at everybody. Now, oh, oh, you've never God. seen grown men panic. You would have thought that guy had a fucking snake in his ass. Everybody rushed to one side of the room. Everybody's hugging the wall. This guy's screaming and waving this shit, shit thing around. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> so finally, the guard comes. He opens the door. There's like 30 people trying to get through one door at a time to get the fuck out of there. <laughs> Can you blame them? Oh. <laughs> so the only point is, is you do see some strange shit when you go away. <laughs> the alternate <laughs> universe. Yeah. That, that, that's like one of those things that's like, you know, what has been seen cannot be unseen. You know? <laughs> All right. Now, 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 have any of you guys seen this thing about Dean Koontz in 1991 book he wrote called The, the Dark uh, Shadow Dark Shadow Eyes or Dark Eyes and Shadows? Yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah, where they, I, the, where I, they pretty much predicted the coronavirus stuff. <laughs> he yeah. called it by the name of the city. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Predicted it. Chinese bio weapon. How about that shit? You can't make this shit up. Life is too strange out there. Yeah. As they say, life imitates imitates uh, story uh, uh, imitates stories or whatever, you know? Or is it the other way around? I don't know. Well, it's a pretty crazy world. There's no question about it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so what do you Trumpy guys got to say? Go ahead, say some shit. Okay, orange man, good. <laughs> Don't chip your teeth on it. <laughs> that's it? <laughs> no, that, that's, that's it? A, that's a, no, that's just to get you left with SJW screaming. You know? <laughs> Where'd you guys up? Wait, wait a minute, did you, did you call me a leftist? <laughs> no, just whoever, next, whoever, whoever, next on, you'll whoever be on the line here. me a Democrat. <laughs> Well, well, I used to vote Republican a lot, but they're as much liars as a Democrat. So they're both well, Trump. I just yeah. can't. I just can't take Trump with all the crap. You know, that's all I can say. <laughs> you know, I, I will be the first to say that Trump is a gigantic horse's ass, but <laughs> really, but to the art, yeah, yeah, really, okay. But um, I still say that he was. He has so far been He's more effective than ex-president Barry Sotoro. You know? Sorry, say that last part again? He's so what? Yeah. He's I been don't know. far more effective in three years than ex-president Barry Sotoro was in eight. So, Oh, he's talking about Obama. <laughs> he called him Barry. Barry Sotoro. Wow. That's his original name. Barry Sorry, Sotoro. You don't get there to change you go. your name. Barry Sotoro. You don't? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. So there. <laughs> Orange man, good. Deal with it. Well, the opinion there. I, I that's all I can say. Has done, I, think, you know I think Trump has done a lot of things that are good and a lot of things that are off. You know, um, not everything he's done has been good. Just like no president has done everything that's good. I, sure. I do, I do like um, whether he takes credit, he doesn't. Who, who the fuck really cares? But I do think that since he's been in office, the economy has been a little bit better. Yes. Now, of course, there will be those now, that say, well. You know, uh, things always run run full presidential cycle behind. Therefore, um, Trump didn't didn't cause any of that stuff. It's all Sotoro doing it. Listen, I, you know. again, I, well, I, I I don't know that Sotoro thing because, like, you know, I, I'm just of the opinion that you know that whole birther movement thing is a bunch of nonsense, simply because the to to get a security clearance in the military requires that they check how many times you wipe your ass, all right? Mm, okay. So I'm sure for the president, highest office in the country, the, the checks that they do, I'm sure they, they know what he had for breakfast 
the minute after he was born. You know, so, you know, it, it, he's listed in and everything as, you know, Barack Hussein Obama. So that, that whole Barry thing, that's whatever, man. You know, <laughs> whether you like the guy or not, I, I always believe in respecting the office. I, I don't think he did a very good job, but I respect the office enough to respect the man to call him by the name that he's known as. Well, it's the first time I've ever heard of that name. Yeah, oh, well, I've never heard of that he, other name either. I never heard of that. He's name. the first. And I he, thought he's, I the, all he's the, the son. <laughs> he's the son of Stanley Ann Dunham, a white woman, and Lolo Satora. Okay. okay. That those are his birth parents. Right. Now, where he was born, you know, I mean, look, as far as I'm concerned, the birth certificate that that has actually been officially released isn't real. But, you know, uh, you, can call me a you can call me what you will, you know. No, I'm saying, but based on what? Based on, based on what it, do, you, do you say that his birth certificate isn't real? I mean, I can't say it is or it isn't because I never saw it. You know, I yeah. never looked at it. I never had it forensically examined to make sure it's not a forgery. Nor, so, Nor have I. Nor have I. Okay, so then so, that's what I'm saying. Like, <clears> yeah. how, what are you basing it on? Well, uh, one thing that I saw... Uh, it was really interesting. Uh, they asked, uh, you, know, you know, on the birth certificate, there was, um, you know, what race? Okay. And race okay. is a whole other discussion. Okay. And it said African-American, okay. which is a term that okay. wasn't used back in 1961 when he was born. Right. It was black or Negro or something like that. African-American was not a term that was being used. So that right there calls things into question in my mind okay. you know that, that's you know so it's stuff like that and also you know i mean uh, and and you know i didn't have any for forensic examination i've never held the document in my hand uh, no you know and and uh, and i'm sure you know uh save for about five or six people uh nobody else has either okay right. um but the you know there there is talk, there was talk Okay, that it looked like it was a photoshopped image by the by an examination of people that work at very either you can say a high level or low level with Photoshop that really, really super deeply understand how it works and and, you know, what happens when you take an image and you, you know, have multiple layers and you flatten the layers and stuff like that. Okay. Right, right. You know, I mean, these people are well, really. I mean, digital images are easy to manipulate. We all know that. But yeah, they are. Again, but this, are is, this is where. But that's what I'm saying. A digital image. But yeah. Birth certificates are a government document. And True. again, I'm gonna say, they said, I know when I when I was in the army back in the '90s. Okay. The um, and I was applying for my security clearance. They they didn't take a digital image of my birth certificate. You know, I'm going to say for the presidency, state bet, just saying, I'm just going out on a limb here. Mm -hmm. They're not going to say, hey, shoot me over a scanned copy off of your iPhone so yeah. that we could see it. You know, just, yeah. again. No, so they take the original. Whatever made it to the Internet. Right. That's what I'm saying. So whatever made it to the Internet that we saw, of course, I'm going to say that definitely was probably doctored to all hell, because again, you know, um, the reality is no president is without enemy. There's always That's political true. rivals. Yes. All right. So again, uh, personally, I don't like the job he did. All right. Um, I'm not a big fan of, you know, President Obama, but... On the same note, random conspiracy theories on images that pop up on the internet of all places are will never be enough to convince me that, you know, he wasn't a U.S. citizen, especially having been through the process of getting a top secret clearance myself for a limited function of working a particular job in the military. So I understand how stringent that was. I mean, I was I was 19 years old, and they went back to when I was 12. 
Yep. Yeah. I can just imagine what the hell they went through for the president. I mean, yeah. Well, I think I think you could end this argument like this: the minute Trump shows his taxes, his birth certificate, his school records, <laughs> his tax returns, <laughs> but, you can call it all. <laughs> Here's the thing. The, Who gives a fuck? The 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 day, are, both of guys got fuck elected. About taxes. Right. Look, I mean, they, the exactly. bottom line is, is those guys got into office by whatever means yeah. Americans voted in, and, and, exactly. and they're there and, now. And right, wrong, or indifferent. <laughs> and if you don't like it, you can somebody. vote them out of there. <laughs> and somebody in the government at a very high level that we'll never know about has all the information that everybody speculates about. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah! yeah Remember back that. on that show, so, the X Files. Here's the only thing you got to know about the government. Hey Sid, remember the cigarette smoking man they had on the X Files? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the mysterious uh, guy, guy that just seemed to know everything, and then they had him as the guy that killed JFK. If you watch some of the yeah, later shows, always, and Doctor King. <laughs> yeah. Listen, listen. All you got to know is about our government is this. In the 50s, they had a guy named, uh, uh, what was his name, Sidney Gottlieb, somewhere in the late 50s. And he was in charge of MLK Ultra. Right. Okay? This is the government's response to mind-controlling people. And they mm-hmm. came up with a product called LSD. It was made only in one place in the entire world, and that was West Germany. And our government, the CIA, went over there and bought every bit of stock they had and controlled it. And they're the ones that released it on the public. Okay? Yeah, you know, they were running a program, true. Larry, out of Atlanta prison, the federal prison, and okay. they were signing up inmates to take to this experimental it. drug. What? Yeah, so to were, test it out. They were using the fed inmates out. as guinea pigs. Well, yeah, they yeah. were giving them a lighter sentence. They cut time off their sentence. They get better food, better quarters. But Whitey Bulger was there, and for seven or nine months, he got dosed about 75 times. I think about that. Anybody out there ever take any LSD, even once or yeah. twice? Any of you guys? Yeah. Yes, First time I did, yeah, we me. went to Disneyland. We were up <laughs> well, all night, well, and everything was yeah. funny. Well, try 79 <laughs> doses in about yeah. six months. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I took a dose first, first and last time I took it My car talked to me It was fucking amazing yeah, it's, it's, you know, I think we've got, got Terry to, Cook on the line in, uh, in Ohio Finley, Ohio Terry, have you, you dropped right acid right. before? You got loaded and I you were blazing? Ha- uh, I have done that I probably maybe not have done it As much as Timothy Leary But I've done it at least 500 times Okay Jeez, I believe you. Okay. Well, where do you think Leary got it? So do From I. Terry <laughs> Cook. <laughs> oh, Lord. The, the government wanted to control, and what happened is they got a revolution. <laughs> they did. Yeah. yeah, yeah and now, Jerry, all, these all these years later, all these years later, we got a communist running for president. Uh, communist. Yeah. Is he really a communist or is he a socialist? Hey, he Come on, admitted. He no, no, he self-admitted as a communist. Oh please! All right, I'm going to stop all the communist. argument about he the communist. He supported guy. Fidel Castro. He's a fucking communist. <laughs> okay, he's a communist, but you got a guy in the White House that got there because of a fucking Russian KGB guy. Bullshit. That's That's it. Great. bullshit, bullshit. I'm going to call bullshit they, on that. Sorry. No, they no, no. Sid has the inside election. track. Sid, tell them, <laughs> tell the listeners what we found out and the, our our hosts with us today, all our guests, about Melania being the control agent and how this is really working. <laughs> oh, Lord. I can't do it. Oh, come on. You know, this, this, this kind of shit is what we hear on the CBS radio mystery theater. Really? <laughs> listen, come on. Listen, whether, whether, uh, hey, I, I just had someone message me not, the Unabomber. The Unabomber uh, was dosed with no LSD. I was trying to say that. He was a part of an experiment with Harvard. Uh, they were actually testing uh, subjects in uh, universities as well. It was part of the what, reason Wasn't he a he professor there at, at one time? No, the he Unabomber, was, a he was at the time. yeah, something. Wendy no, in Texas, who's a who did federal time, 
She got hit on a bullshit narcotics charge. She sent that in to me. I mean, the Unabomber, isn't he still alive? All right, we're going to cut to a commercial. What do we got, 30 seconds? 10 seconds? 30 seconds. All right, we're going to cut to a commercial here. Commercial. I'm slurring my words. Commercial. On the Friday Chaos Crew, the Street Justice (laughs) Show here on Pirate Radio USA and BBM Global. We'll be right back with you. Have you ever felt like no one is listening or you're not getting the honest attention you deserve? Do you even know the kind of attention you want or need? You are not alone. Alice Aspen March is here to help. Thanks to Alice, through her epiphany and research over the word attention, there are solutions to the attention dilemma. Worldwide audiences have been enthralled and engaged for over 40 years with her visionary and pioneering observations. The kind of attention we get and give is vital to improving our lives and society. Alice and her weekly guests review game-changing insights for transforming and improving our understanding of attention, providing techniques for creating healthier and empowering behavior. Get a new perspective on a mainstream word. Tune into Why Our Attention Matters for fresh and thought-provoking conversations every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on BoldBraveMedia.com and the TuneIn Radio app. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkali, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Larry Levine, self-taught in criminal law and tired of seeing people getting ripped off or burned by the system, is ready to talk one-on-one with you. It's not about who's right or wrong. It's who's a better liar. And now the host of Street Justice, Larry Levine. And welcome back to Street Justice with the Chaos Crew. I'm Holly Coleman, and uh, damn glad to know everybody. <laughs> I thought we'd pick it up a little bit. I think we, uh, Larry, that you had touched on um, AG Barr and the Mueller the, report. The uh, yeah. you're talking about the Attorney General of the United States. The Attorney, yes, that one. Who is familiar with what Holly is talking about? There's something that just came out in the news. I just that, read that. Uh, yeah. A federal judge called Barr's handling of the Mueller report distorted and misleading and blasted Barr on this. Apparently, this guy got to see a copy of what we didn't get to see. Anyone following yeah. that? Yeah, Judge Reggie, whatever the hell his name was. Um, Reggie hey, George uh, Bush. Uh, he was a federal judge. That's the top yeah. prosecutor in the country. Doesn't matter no, no, if he's no, the, the top the prosecutor in the world. The guy's got to follow the law. All this should have been released in the report for the American people to make their own decision instead of giving us a hand job and a whitewash. I think that's how I would describe that. <laughs> I think that. it's called redacting. I would, redacting, Larry. I would describe it that way. <laughs> he, he redacted the complete report. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know what? Trump, that, was like what elected, uh, that was, was like no when I said. That was like when I was blank, getting blank, discovery. Blank. I think there could have been blank, blank, blank. Sid, when I was getting discovery what? on my federal case of all the charges and shit, I would get right. all this evidence from the FBI and DEA, and half the page was blacked out. Remember seeing that kind of shit? <laughs> yeah, so, you, you, so you know firsthand yeah. that redacting is. Yeah. yeah. So but basically, the, the Mueller page. report, which I don't know was two hundred something pages, the telephone book, they had one page they could read. Yeah, that was Correct. probably the title page. One. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was 
Co the complete bullshit. <laughs> so where do you, Holly, where do you think, Sorry. Holly, for those of you that don't know, she did 21 months federal time, white yeah, collar, a woman's prison, okay. spent a bunch of time in the hole in San Bernardino as well as in Victorville, California at the prison. Now she works for the public defender in Dallas, Texas. So, Doing Holly, where do work. you think... Where do you think this is going to go with the with the no, bar where? report and with a Mueller report with Barr and the judge? And how do you think they're going to handle that? Zero. I think the coronavirus has taken over and everything that you see, people are distracted and panicking with that. But they're not paying attention yep. to this stuff. They see they I mean, see Biden, Bernie and, and Trump and they kind of everybody's thrown up their hands and really kind of tuned out with that. Just. Focus elsewhere. That's the whole I think idea. Regardless then. of what was what's going on, they're still folk, uh, you know, untuned out. It's such a a crazy thing to be exposed to, but the general public just listens to it and goes in one ear out the other. You know, it doesn't really surprise many yeah. people. You can tell somebody guys, about a a Joe Schmo case uh, here in the Central District uh, where they talk about redacting information or fabricating evidence or withholding exonerating evidence, things like that, and People just, they don't want to believe it. No, they don't. They, that or they're just like, no, you don't know what you're talking about or that doesn't really happen. And, uh, <laughs> it's shocking. Well, okay. It's shocking. Well, for Holly's that. right. It, Look at it, conspiracy it, laws. Do you, does anybody really know how a conspiracy law works? I mean, really? I have not quite a, if, if you've been convicted it of it, you do. Well, yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm going to yeah. give a quick lesson yeah. here. Two basic uh, no, kinds conspiracy. of conspiracies. 18371 of the U.S. Code. That's conspiring to commit a crime against the United States. And then you have 21846, 841, which Sid and I are guilty of, narcotics trafficking. Ooh. In a... <laughs> Narcotics crime. Let's say that uh, – let's say Mark Palmer. Mark, are you still with us? Yeah. Mark, let's Mark, say you Mark. walk into a a bar there in Phoenix. And you're just sitting there having a drink, woeing on your life, whatever it may be. Some guy comes in and asks you, hey, uh, can you hook me up with some cocaine or some heroin or something? You look up at the guy. You go, you know, I'm not really into that. Talk to Charlie at the end of the bar. He goes and talks to Charlie, and they make a deal. They discuss a certain quantity of narcotics and a certain price. So they've agreed to this. Now, mm -hmm. the deal never takes place. No money ever existed. No drugs ever existed. But the problem is that the agreement in a drug case, that mm -hmm. is the overt act. You yeah, did something to, to, only to commit to an unlawful Hold on. or harmful act. Yes, you did something to further the conspiracy on something that really didn't happen. Yes. No drugs, yeah. no deal, no money, no real crime. But you did something to further Fantasy. the crime. So the agreement's the overt act. Now, let's say that Mark and Terry Cook. Terry, are you still with us? I surely am. Mark and Terry <laughs> Cook go and have a couple drinks. It's early in the afternoon. It's a Friday. They say, you know what? We're going to go rob the Bank of America. And uh, Terry says, okay, that's a good idea. There's one here in Finley, <laughs> Finley, Ohio. Now, I can see Terry doing that. They've agreed. They've conspired to rob the bank. Terry pulls out a – Terry pulls out somewhere. Terry Cook finds an old Yellow Pages. It's behind the counter. Terry's fucking around behind the counter. Who knows? He finds an old yellow pages, says, here's the bank. We could use this. And then uh, Mark pulls out his cell phone. Wow, we could park our getaway car here. Okay. Now, when they agreed to rob the bank, they didn't break the law. Like in a drug case, when they agreed to do the deal, the, the law was broken. But in this particular case, when Mark Palmer and Terry Cook decided to go rob a bank somewhere, it wasn't a crime until they did something to further the conspiracy. So the minute Terry right. Cook tore the page out of the yellow page and let the beard drip off his face onto it, 
And Mark fumbled around on his telephone and said, wow, here's our getaway location. We can get on the highway here. They've broken the law. But did That's any right. of this really take place? No. There was no – it never happened. But in this country, they can go after you for that. And, That's right. and the only other country that had laws like that was the Spanish kingdom in 1492 <clears throat> during the Spanish Inquisition. We reached back a few centuries to go get some bullshit conspiracy laws all under the guise of the war on drugs, which is basically the war on the American fucking people. Thank you. I can't argue with that. You know why well, they don't have it? Tell it. Is, tell it. Now, 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 one thing I'll interject when you get there. This is a good point, if you don't mind, Larry, that he brought up. Our government really has brought in more drugs to this country or allowed that to a point. If you look at our CIA, other parts, you know, when you go through history and look at this, it's unbelievable, but people don't want to believe it. But if you missed the part where I told you who came out with the LSD for our generation? No, I didn't miss, you miss that, that part. part. Fuck yeah. The no, government no, brings right. in the drugs. <laughs> we, controlled the sea, we controlled the fields in Laos where the opium yeah. came when the French left. We're in Afghanistan yeah. because we controlled the fields there. Right. Bill Clinton was governor of Arkansas when they flew that yep. big C-4 plane loaded with cocaine in. Yeah, it was a 123. Got killed for that. And also yep. illegal guns, both and of them, what he would call the medical supply the stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Larry Alger has joined us from up there in Seattle. Larry, is that you? That is me. You're up there in that Seattle, one. the... The ground zero, if you will, no. of the coronavirus. What are you noticing, if anything, if anything? What are you noticing differently up there? Well, let me put it to you like this. Wednesday, there was almost no traffic on the 5 freeway going into downtown Seattle, which is unheard That's of. That's crazy. Okay. Uh, I have a client in Seattle they, that... I visit, well, in Bothell, and whenever I go to SeaTac to go to Bothell, it, that, that's a nightmare. Yeah, right. That's crazy. And this is during rush hour. People aren't going to work. They've got schools shut down. Pence was here yesterday over at uh, Camp Murray, which is McCord Air Force Base, Camp Murray. Um the joint huge base they've got there, meeting with G Inslee, Jay Inslee, our governor, assuring them that they would support uh, our efforts since we are ground zero for deaths in of the coronavirus in the in the United States. First one's happened here. Well, so, according to the Orange Band of Washington, it's all going to be over in April. It'll be a miracle. It'll just go away. Now you sound like oh, Donald no. Trump. Oh, no, 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 no. The, the plan. <laughs> I better sell all only. the shit in my store right now, then. If only, Sid. That's not the deal, Sid. I'm okay. sorry. I wish it were. But What's no. The deal? No, 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 no. The vaccine is going to be out in about a year and a half. So hold tight till then. <laughs> and get, get ready, and I'm not shitting you, Sid. Get ready for your local FEMA authorized isolation den. You know, medical you know martial law is fucking here. They bought when they, an when they law. Into the box cars. No, 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 no. Nah, <clears throat> nah, nah, it's not. It's not going to be that way. They bought an Econo Lodge for the first isolation, uh, coronavirus isolation spot. Yeah. They went to an interview. The local news went to interview the people. <laughs> I can't believe this. Went to interview the people. And, you know, they got, they got B-roll of the maids shaking pillows and shit like that, right? And the manager and nobody there knew about it. So wait, wow. the government the went time, and got a hotel and housed corona victims there and never told anyone? 
Well, no, they announced it on the news, but it, the news didn't get to the people who were running the motel. The bottom the line is SP. the federal government went and placed people. Was it the feds or the state of Washington? It's state of, no, it's King County. Okay, the bottom line is King County Health Department went and rented rooms in a hotel or motel, no, probably a motor the fucking or hotel. Or in a they hotel. The hotel Larry. They rented rooms in a hotel, stuck a bunch of people that were infected with coronavirus. Were they infected or nobody's did they believe been, they had? Nobody's it? in it yet because it's it's just it's just happening. As a matter of fact, today the city of Okay, Kent. so they what you're saying is that they're they they what? They used eminent domain, took over the hotel in preparation Bought it for out. a possible quarantine center? Yes. For projected, okay, all right, quarantine center, and they well, even you know no one else is going to stay oh. there. They just ruined that hotel. Uh, <laughs> oh, they, Are they doing the spraying ruination. up there? Are they hey, spraying up spray. there like they are in China in Seattle? No, they're no. not. Okay, not yet. Well, what okay, they are doing I have a relative is they're that's sp- up there, and they were wondering the same thing. They were surprised yes. they no, had. No, no, no. They're spraying it. Okay. As of today, they are spraying it. SeaTac. Okay. Oh wow. Okay. The airport. What, what about spraying? the airports and stuff? I, I don't know what. What are they spraying? They are spraying disinfectant with uh, four times a day in passenger high traffic areas. Mm. Oh, they're doing that in New York yes. too in the subways. Yeah. Sure, exactly. Because they don't want to. They don't want it to spread. Right, yeah. exactly. Uh-huh. Supposedly, but yeah. that's and that changes. That changes everything. I'm telling you, this is the beginning yeah. of medical martial law. It, as Stevie Wonder I, said, I wouldn't it doubt it. You know, Trump put in eight point three. Uh, was it trillion or billion into this? Trillion. Billion, billion, yeah, emergency, yeah. right. Pass the Senate, yeah. boom, it's done deal. Yeah. That's why Pence was out here at, at the Army camp with yeah. having a press conference yesterday with the governor, and, and the head of the CDC was here. And they were talking uh, about it was he- that they were uh, a year to a year and a half projected uh, for the virus or the the vaccine. The, the vaccine. vaccine. Well, my president, hold on. My president said that they're going to have a vaccine very soon. Are you saying that the guy in D.C. is lying? Oh, not, no, he just he's not lying. He's the head. He's the head of the, the CDC. No, I'm talking about the guy Trump with the orange face. Yeah, I know. The guy just shot his mouth off again. Counterdicting <laughs> the CDC counterdicting the World Health Organization and counterdicting that beady little guy who keeps appearing behind him. You know what I'm talking about, Doc? I forget the doctor's name. That uh, Azari, you, all, you guys Azara, all know who I mean. Like that. He's like Arca. world-renowned. Do you know who I mean? No, I don't. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Let me see. Yeah, there's a doctor the for the CDC. I think he's with CDC Was here. Okay, well, the uh, a short guy, bald beard. No, 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 no. This guy has hair. hair. No, no, no. Well, that sounds like Larry or me. The head of the CDC yeah. who was on TV here yesterday. <laughs> last night. Listen, as long as it's not Doctor Kavorkian, we're fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Doctor Kavorkian was a hero. No, it's Doctor. Oh, and, and I, I wish it were Doctor Kavorkian. He knew what he was doing. I well, know, huh? I mean, Sid brought <laughs> an interesting time. thing that up just now. That guy got results. We oh, said, yeah. you, yeah. Sid, you solved effective. the puzzle. We now What's know that? because of Sid Blitz who Trump <laughs> is getting his medical advice from and guidance from Dr. Seuss. Oh, Dr. I would have <laughs> never thought of that, Sid. Absolutely. <laughs> that, that that's the only book that is reading level. What are you talking about? <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to we're going to cut to a commercial here on the Street Justice show, the Friday Chaos Crew, 866-451-1451. We'd love to hear from you. 
We're going to be right back with you, and we're going to be talking about uh, Trump and his reading material, Dr. Seuss. So keep on listening, motherfuckers. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success, as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers, as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network, and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. French Rastafarian baker Chef Oug Mat is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Ouvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Ouvmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Larry Levine, self-taught in criminal law and tired of seeing people getting ripped off or burned by the system, is ready to talk one-on-one with you. It's not about who's right or wrong. It's who's a better liar. And now the host of Street Justice, Larry Levine. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Chaos Crew and. Street Justice, part of uh, Justice Broadcasting, with Larry Levine. And Larry's not here right now, but Sid <laughs> from Venice is, right, Sid? I'm here. I'm here. Yes. Yes, I'm definitely here. All right. Well, we got have we got another caller on the line? Yeah. Sheila from New Jersey. Jersey. We got okay. one. Sheila uh, from New Jersey. Jersey. How about Holly? Sheila from New Jersey. Anybody else? Hi. I'm here. Trish Fry Boy is here for another 30 seconds. All right, seconds. Ollie, just checking. I'm All right. And then Mark from okay, Phoenix. So. I won't so say who else. So it's two and two. Uh, Nick right. goes with his And there's TV. Terry. Hey, you Terry. Better. I better. All right, so. what? And then there's me. talking about. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, so we got a whole, we got the whole crew going. Cool. Mm-hmm. So, back to the coronavirus. Sid. Do yeah. you see that? Do you see anything uh, no. here that do- doesn't smell right to you? The timing, you know, this oh. shit breaks loose <laughs> with Trump. Oh, it's, oh you mean? You and, mean? Do I think the Corona thing's a put up job? <laughs> yes. Uh, I don't think it's by the Trump people, if, if that's what you mean. I mean, you know, the thing, the thing started in China, and Dean Coombs predicted it over twenty years ago. So I'll go with yep. the Chinese. <laughs> you know they're know devious the fuckers. I'm going with them. Why do they do it? Taking out the Iranians? What the heck? Yeah. Who knows? And know. listen, China's got what? One billion. I, I heard it was million people, right? I heard so it was for population 1. control 7. to get rid of the elders. So, yeah. So if they <laughs> lost a couple of yeah, hundred million people, that. you know, it it wouldn't put a dent in their society because now you can have more than one kid anyway. So, you know, they can go fuck up a whole new generation up in 20 years to, like, play in the factories. I mean, China really doesn't, you know, lose a couple hundred million people. No big deal to them. They want yeah. us down to uh, uh, 10% of what we have now. That's what they want us down to. Okay. That's true. America? Uh, the rulers of the, the world. world. Okay. Oh, the uh-huh. rulers of the world. 
Yeah, not them aliens, yeah. right, Terry? Not the aliens. Oh. Do we all agree that viruses are man-made, just like the AIDS virus? Yeah. Perfect timing. Could not be even put No, they can't. Timing. They can be man-made, Terry. They can yeah. be man-made. Not all yeah. viruses are man-made. Okay. That's right. True. Yeah. Okay. This one probably. Oh no! This one's documented. Absolutely. This okay. is a weaponized bio Virus. warfare. Uh, Did Bill Gates mention it like five years ago or something? Well, the the Bill and Linda Gates Foundation have an interest in a patent. And I'm not going to say the year because I I can't nail it for the canine. Coronavirus, <laughs> which is a doggy version of this. I'm not, I couldn't make well, this I shit hope, up. I hope the dog. Is don't that get really it. true? That's really true. I researched it. I, you know, I saw it. You see a post, and you go, "Yeah, okay, maybe." And then, yeah, that's five, what I was thinking. Six. Like I had, to, but it's I guess for real. That's crazy. Yeah. You've seen it. Well, right? you would be surprised at a lot of things that our government and other governments have with bio, you know, weapons. In all honesty, the new yeah. world order. I'm telling Bring you, the, the conspiracy. Everybody the says, G5. "Oh, you're a conspiracy theorist." Uh, no, it's not well, theory, dude. <laughs> it's not fucking theory. You know. Anyway, so like, law. You know, go ahead. The theory. That's conspiracy. The law theory. says you cannot protest G5. Or you go to the slammer. You can't protest what, yep. Terry? G5. Yeah. Clinton bring that in in 1996? Yes, he, yes. That's what started it with the telecom, passing of the telecom uh, regulation in bill in 96. That's correct. Okay. Mm-hmm. You, um, states, cities, Arizona. counties do not have the right to impede uh, G5 transmitters uh, and planting of them in their turf. They want them on either, every block. Map post, yep. every block. Complete. Now, have you, you seen the... Uh, did you guys see Gloria Allred uh, on the news today uh, defending the Asian no. child who was discriminated against at school? No, what happened? No, I'm by a teacher. not aware of that. I guess the teacher was discriminating against him because he was aging, making claims that he had coronavirus. Jeez. Oh, fuck. <laughs> so what, what she's happened? on there. Did she's taking the case. The law, the law of unintended consequences. Yeah. Jesus. This is going to get out of hand just terribly. I mean, it's a pretty big lawyer there. She's a pretty big attorney, takes big cases. So I'm, I'm surprised. Oh, yeah, I'm from L.A. So that well, that quick. I know Gloria already. Let me, let me throw something out at you guys about her. I know for a fact several people have now, I don't know if they talk directly to her, but some of the Scientologists and some other people I know that are victims, true victims of sexual abuse or of such things in that area, have reached out to her and a few other major top lawyers. And because of the church they come from, they say, well, we're busy with cases. We can't take one. But then they see them take another case. But every time it has to do with the Catholic Church or it has to do with the Scientologists, they, they're too busy. So the victims have contacted us back and forwarded them to other people. Yeah. I was definitely impressed with a small amount of Scientologists who ended up in federal prison. I was blown away. You know, I was involved with the chapel, and I was involved with all the religions and, you know, maintaining uh, and coordinating for all the events. And I was blown away. I didn't come across one Scientologist in my time. Not saying that they don't get locked up. I just was mm-hmm. blown away by the lack of Scientologists in prison. Well, it has to do, you know, down the toilet or down the by a whole area down there. Sounds like juice. <laughs> <laughs> no. Are we Just making because any headway? Are we making oh any headway God. on fixing oh, our rigged election system? No. Larry? Not at all. 
Uh, okay. uh, we could be doing well. much better. Okay. There are people that that are doing the investigations, taking actions in court on specific issues, like my buddy Greg Pallas with his uh, action and investigation against Brian Kemp, the guy who ran for governor of Georgia and kicked 300,000 poor black people off the uh, the voter rolls. And Greg investigated it, he sued it, and he won. You know, uh, the, uh, there's 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 a gal named Bev Bev Harris who has blackboxvoting dot org dot org I think it is, and um, she's the one that came up with the the reality of this fractional magic uh, mm-hmm. in hacking and altering uh, voting machines. There are people well, they brought on that it. out, but nothing was done about it. That's the thing that gets me. At least several times they brought out uh, within the last 15 to 20 some years. I know that HBO did a thing showing it for Democrats and Republicans. How then That's Florida the with shit. the ballots, they threw them away, and not a damn thing was done. That was her stuff. gig, was the HBO yeah. deal. Oh, yeah. well, okay. Well, you know, I, but they're still doing it. Right? That's the point I'm, that I'm making, supposedly. You know. Yeah, it's weird. Ever since, ever since I got involved in 2016, the mess in San Diego with whited out Bernie votes, I've become part mm-hmm. of the election justice community. And Greg Pallas and Lulu Freestat and Tim Canova down in Florida. Uh, it's just amazing what I've sort of stepped into and the the caliber yeah. of people that I know are working on it. We cannot well, throw up our hands and say, oh, there's nothing to be done. You, well, I'm just saying in general, show up. something that should yeah. be done isn't really done because in all fairness, now I'm not a fan of Hillary Clinton, but in all honesty, when she and Bernie were here running against and all the stuff that there were questions of voting problems here in Arizona, questions up around, I think it was New Jersey <laughs> or that, you know, of voting. And the point that I'm making is nothing was done and it was a year or two later and then already the election's over with. You know? That's the point that I'm coming to, you know. Yeah, okay, and so my perspective on that is it's not by accident, it's not by ignorance, it's not sloppiness or carelessness. It is absolutely planned. They went from they closed seventy percent in Arizona of the polling mm-hmm. places around in Maricopa County, around uh the university. All right. And there was like it was like seven hours at that place. You know, mm-hmm. it was crazy. That's uh, awesome. yeah, they had a lot thing. of problems, believe me, several Let's places sum, here. Sum up the yeah. election system we have now by the late J. George Carlin. They have us by the balls. <laughs> want, want everything. <laughs> Got to take what they don't have. And already the force G five on every lamp post. We're already number one infant mortality in the whole world. If you want to have the best chance for a baby to live, go to Japan or Russia or China. Yeah. Don't go here. We are number one in the okay. And the reason why? Because we vaccine the holy hell out of those little guys. Yeah. yeah. Now I have a question to ask you guys. Have you heard the conspiracy now? I'm going to be very careful because I'm still looking into this. But they're blaming G5 for the virus over where one lady went on. She takes no, a whole no, no, social no, no, media no, no, thing. No. You want the, you want the bear, deal? Bear, no, 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 bear, bear with me. Let me just get through this. Now, I'm not saying I believe it, but I do will say there is one interesting fact you brought out about this, that when you look at the science behind and what they question about G5 when it can do to the public, the uh, interesting thing is some of the similarities that they were showing and talking about are are similar, but I'm not saying that's the reason, but they were throwing a fit about how, of course, China, when they were saying this and putting this out there, that they have all this already over there, and this is what's causing it. Well, 
I'm not saying that's the case, but there were a few things that when you look into where people have have problems with this, some of the effects that it will have on people about blacking out or probable breathing and all this, you know, that's where I'm coming from. I'm just saying I find it interesting. I'm not saying it's exact fact, but you know, it's interesting. Well, I've got I've got something to say about that. Okay, go ahead. And <laughs> and it's it's not it's not just an assertion, but 5G operates at a 60 gigahertz frequency. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. That's what it is. And right. at 60 gigahertz, the the physical size of the ant wave is so small, right? Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. it's it has specific effects like the Megatron of a microwave oven. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm looking Because at basically what what generates the microwave energy is a magnetron. Mm-hmm. That's the device. Mm-hmm. And at sixty gigahertz, what it does, my understanding, science shows <laughs> that it affects that the 60 gigahertz waves affects oxygen molecules and it also it affects um, iron yeah and uh, that's the process of oxidization the hemoglobin mm-hmm. and then it it squeezes the hemoglobin, and a lot of it. The research I've seen shows that there's such a variation in in people and the way their he, individual hemoglobin transfer works mm-hmm. that this is uh, there's all kinds of different effects. But the coronavirus basically has many of the same effects that G5 does on the body through that process and others because of the 60 gig, the size of the 60 gig frequency microwave energy it puts out. Does all that make sense to everybody? Well, that's basically what they were saying and what I'm talking about. You're right on the money. Yep, 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 yep. All of what you yeah, have no, said uh, is intensified and magnified by the chemtrails, boron, <laughs> and aluminum being sucked Tied up. Tied all together, bro. Tied so, all together. So, Terry, does that mean when I drive down the street, I'm getting fried like I'm in a microwave? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would be moving out of Arizona. Okay. <laughs> block, block. Mark, Mark Every block they're putting me in for a couple of minutes. Somewhere, okay. Cook me? Uh, live in a little bag it's all aluminum <laughs> all around you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yikes. That's well, what so. Do I have to wear the You know, and so it, Levine, ta- ta- Levine takes <laughs> off and we get we get a, 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 a real show. Now listen to this. <laughs> oh, Justice man, I News, go there. <laughs> Just, JusticeNewsNetwork.com, which is affiliated with Street Justice and Justice Broadcasting, <laughs> has a uh, very complete report on this. This is why I know what I'm talking about with about seven or eight videos of people explaining shit uh, about the 5G and the implications and the realities. So justicenewsnetwork.com. Yeah. I'm still looking at it, but I'll go ahead and send him a copy of it and hopefully I'll post or look at it. It gets long, but it's very mind boggling because of the information. There's so much, but the way she does it, it's broken down, but there's a lot to still take in. And she does a very good job, but she gives a lot of good data, a lot of good facts, but I just can't swallow everything she says con- to this, but I see a lot of similarities, and I'm not going to deny it or say it's definitely true. I'm like in between. Yeah. I'll put it that way. You know what I'm saying? All right. So we we got about 20 seconds, and we're out for the next break. So, wow! Thanks everybody for listening. I uh, <laughs> hope you uh, hope you got your uh, bear poke. Your five so ears on. Ears on. That's it. And. Uh, I got my the chaos crew with me. Justice Street Justice is 
Looking forward to talking one more time to you. The opiate epidemic has reached crisis levels, and with so many families affected by addiction, opiate-related drug overdoses, and death, the time is now to have a real constructive conversation about addiction that could lead to better prevention, treatment, and recovery. Alan Charles, author and keynote speaker on drug abuse and prevention, presents The Alan Charles Show. Alan brings a message of hope, sharing his unbelievable story of surviving a 24-year addiction to cocaine and and highlights from his memoir, Walking Out the Other Side, an addict's journey from loneliness to life. His raw honesty and courageous heart breaks the stigma of addiction and offers a unique perspective into the mind of an addict. Join Alan each week as he brings his listeners to a true understanding of the grip of addiction. It is only with this understanding that we can begin to heal. The Alan Charles Show, Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network. Horses, mystical, present past and future all in one wild free domestic and healing for everyone betty hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with nature connect equine coaching her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope trust and joy Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. Larry Levine, self-taught in criminal law and tired of seeing people getting ripped off or burned by the system, is ready to talk one-on-one with you. It's not about who's right or wrong. It's who's a better liar. And now the host of Street Justice, Larry Levine. This is Leo bringing you back from the break. Welcome back to the Street Justice Show with the Chaos Crew. Take it on, gentlemen. <laughs> All right. Well, Who's here? I'm Larry. I'm Larry from Seattle. I'm a top hey, cat from. from. Hey, where's Leo from? I'm from Simi Valley. Yeah. Where's he from? Oh okay. yeah, you were on before one time, weren't you? Yes. Yes, he was. You're the one that, that Larry brought up last week. You got arrested for the child pornography because you and the girl were both 15 sharing some pictures. Yeah, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't just a one-time situation, multiple. No, 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 um, that's okay. I don't need to hear the whole story again. I was just identifying who you were. I got it. Yep. Nobody's that was blaming me. you. We ain't calling you anything dirty. We understand the situation. <laughs> you were kids. Believe me, we did worse in our day. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reality. Well, they, maybe you said I was an we angel. Did, we would not get out in five lifetimes. <laughs> but you're okay, Leo. Don't worry. Yeah. Hey, when we were to in commercial there or whatever we were doing on break, I think um, the Arizona, the the church going Mark. Arizona guy. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> the church going <laughs> Arizona guy. <laughs> Yeah, Arizona Mark, you know. <laughs> Arizona Mark was bringing up some bullshit about Laurel Canyon and the uh, bands that came out of Laurel Canyon and how their parents were all in the military and blah, blah, blah. No, I said a lot okay, of them Mark, were, not me, all of them. Let me, let me put your mind at ease, okay? <laughs> let me put your mind at ease here. The groups that came out of Southern California and San Francisco. Yeah, I'm very familiar with them. I mean... I mean, that's part of the boomer generation. There's 84 million of us. And there were so many kids on the street and so many kids that's in right. groups. And and L.A. basically was the epic center of that. And Mo Alderson, who is the chairman of the board of Warner Brothers Record, he was the yeah. king daddy of all of them. He was the dawn of dawns. And all these groups that sprung forth, Believe me, they were they were kids of any CIA parents or any military. I think the only one that had a military dad was what's his name from the Doors. 
Well, I'll tell you what I'll You're do. I will send Jim you. Morrison, you I Jim tell, Morrison's no, no, dad I, was I, some kind of an admiral. But other than him, I heard of nothing of that nature. Well, nothing, I'll send you, bro. and you can look you up and verify if I'm right or wrong, but – they did a book, and the guy who was the author, I just can't think of his name now, but the bottom line was they were talking about this one night. So I went in and looked. I contacted friends of mine that I knew uh, from back in my wilder days that I'm still friends with, and they said, yeah, there were a lot of people that uh, their parents were either in military or some even high up in the government in the military machine, as you would call it today, that, you know, they played and sang here, and we couldn't get over, you know, not anything happened to them. They weren't drafted or any of this. But, yeah, there are quite a few. I'm not saying every one. But there were a lot of let, let me tell you something, buddy. The draft didn't pick and choose. The draft notices went out, and everybody went down there. People like Donald Trump and some senator's son, they wrote a song about it. Some of those people got out on deferment, bone spurs, college. They got married to their sister and had five children already. Listen, yeah. the wealthy always get out. Sure. And, and That's they a big get out, Bush, George dude. Bush's or Bush. own son, the other Bush, enlisted in the National Guard. They put him in the National Guard so he wouldn't have to go to Vietnam. Right. Okay, it's no, that that for a moment. And he never showed up one day. He showed up the day to sign up and the day to sign out. That was his experience. Okay. There are guys like John McCain, whose whole family history dates back God knows how long. Everybody was a fucking admiral or a general. Okay. There are families in this country of wealthy uh, scions that the kids, one of the kids out of many, goes into the military, goes into politics, all that normal bullshit. But I can yeah. tell you, back in the 60s, the end of the 60s, the 70s, L.A., West Hollywood was one rocking fucking place. Everybody I know, hated I know. the Vietnam War. They'd tell me on this people. bullshit about how wonderful the Vietnam War is. Don't tell me on the bullshit that there's some guys my age still walking around with their veterans hat on, crying about what happened to them in the Vietnam War. Fuck that. We all went through the war. We all went through the change in the revolution. And a whole bunch of us went to fucking prison because of the war mm -hmm. the government foisted on us because of Richard Nixon. So, you oh, know, I know some that of these kids in rock bands that they have parents that work with the government. Shit, the, Southern California was a hotbed of fucking industrial military complex businesses. Hughes Aircraft is no more than four blocks from my I house. Know, where I know exactly what helicopter. you're talking about, man. Now it's a Costco. <laughs> You know, you know, all of Southern California was involved in making rockets and planes and helicopters. Mm -hmm. And, and, and the rocket-dying nuclear, yeah. rocket-dying nu secret nuclear uh, facility up in Prowers Canyon. Right on, the, right on the rock above Simi Valley. <laughs> no, they had, a nuclear, they had a nuclear reactor there. We had a Nike up. missile base yeah. at Victory yep. Boulevard and the 405 yeah. freeway. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. the reason they had that base, that secret base, is they wanted to protect the San Fernando Valley was was vital to the war effort. There was so much shit made here. But, mm -hmm. you know, don't take the rock bands with, with political shit. Most of the rock bands were about protests. Some of them weren't. But oh, I know. I'm just saying their parents, not everyone, but a lot of them, yeah. And yeah, I was here when now. they started, when I started the whole Scientology bullshit, L. Ron Hubbard. You were yeah, I know, unfortunately. Bullshit. Hey, go to Hollywood bet. now and see how many buildings they own. <laughs> they had two meltdowns. Did you guys oh. ever get a chance to pull up on uh, the Le the good old Lexus Nexus, any case law about Rocketdyne, any of the lawsuits that were filed against them? No. So. I, I got to do a lot of the reading because obviously you guys know I'm from Simi Valley. So I was interested mm -hmm. in what was happening. And um, there were some things I read in there of like gases that were being uh, released. They didn't know how to dispose of uh, that were well, locked you're, in you're barrels. They would put the them on lawn pads. From, from the natural gas thing right around the corner. Uh, no, that's, that's a separate the issue. We know, that's a separate issue. We know about the valleys because we grew up in the valley. And we grew up in those yeah, well, so, that. so we know it from the street level, not just fucking some author comes around 30 years of past, you know, who wasn't there, but 30 years later, he's writing about some bullshit somebody filled his ear full of. 
Okay. You, you want to know about the the House of, of the Rising Sun cult that got blown up in Simi Valley? Ask me. I'll tell you. They dynamite the yeah. place. You want to ask me about the rattlesnakes they put in the uh, mailboxes down at the uh, Santa Monica? What was that before? It was the Pritikin Center. That other fucking cult. <laughs> California, Southern California, is the cult center of the fucking universe for the United States. Uh, Orange County. You bet. Pretty much. No, Orange, no. Orange, Orange County. County Orange, Orange County was white flight. 1969, yep. Irvine Company decided they were going to develop Lake Forest. Well, all the white guys or families that were in Southern California started moving down to Orange County. They called it the White Flight. Mm-hmm. And, that was, and that's why Orange County was fucking solid Republican red until last year. Yep. Solid. They had a guy there who was in Huntington Beach, which is part of Orange County. He was there 62 fucking years. They finally dislodged him. John Wayne lived there. The John Birch Society started there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fucking Orange County. <laughs> I'd ask me anything yeah. else. <laughs> yeah. I'll back you up for all that. Had, uh, Thank you, Larry. Bike, I knew you would. Bike clubs of any other county. Orange County. What? Say that again? I think they had the... the I think, just my belief, that Orange County had the most um, uh, number of motorcycle clubs. And you're referring to what year, Terry? In 68 and 69. Fuck no. No okay. fucking way. You're saying no. Right. First, now, first of all, the, 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 five freeway, the five freeway was a two-lane freeway in the 60s going yep. into Orange County. And the 405 yeah. was a fucking pipe dream. Secondly, all of Orange County, where you're talking about, from Westminster down, just when you mm-hmm. pass Westminster and you pass uh, the old folks' home, what was that? Leisure World, okay? Leisure then, World, then it was yeah. all open field, and there was El John Toro Wayne Airport, area. and then and, and that El Toro, not even El Toro. Lake Forest is at the very beginning where the 5 meets the 405 Irvine Ranch. Irvine right. Ranch, the Irvine family, owned 90% of all the land in Orange County. That was all farms in the 60s, okay? The bike clubs you're talking about all started yeah. basically in the San Fernando Valley and in the west side and yep. in Inglewood and in the central part of L.A. That's where all the outlaw motorcycle ba- 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 uh, clubs sprung from, except for Purdue. Purdue had the Hells Angels out there. That was the second. Yeah, yeah. That was the number one mother chapter is San Berdu. That's a good ninety minutes from L.A. on a good day in freeway traffic. Today, uh-huh. regular freeway traffic it'll take you three hours. Good, good. Okay, did I set you straight, Larry? I mean, Terry. Yeah, you betcha. Right on. All right. Yeah. I know you we can just ask had me that. about any. If Terry, you can ask me any day, any time you want about any of the outlaw clubs, the ones that are real one for And I'll tell you where they started from, and I'll tell you the origins and some of the, the lore, okay? Hey, I, sounds like I, a I Netflix well, show right. to me, now, You know the story about the uh, Hells Angels loaning John Paul DiGiorio, uh, uh enough money to build his electric car. They loaned him $100,000 to begin. Now he's a billionaire. Yeah. Wait a minute. John, John, John Paul, Paul DiGiorgio, DiGiorgio. Is, is, yeah. that's Paul Michael's shampoo. Paul Michel shampoo. Yeah. Paul Michael. Okay. Yeah, Paul Michael. It has nothing to do with electric cars. Mitchell. And Paul Mitchell, thank you. Now, he, he built an electric car that did 100 mile an hour. That was a world record. That set him into being recognized as doing something better than anyone else. He acquired All right, 17. Let me, set straight. Let, let me set you straight. I don't know about right. Paul Mitchell, Paul John DiGiorgio doing anything with electric cars. I know he had oh, a partner. True. He had a partner, and the partner went down to Ke- uh, not Tijuana, Tequila, Mexico, which is about an hour outside of Guadalajara, up in the mountains. There's a whole town there called Tequila. This is where, for hundreds of miles, the agave plants that are blue grow, and that's where they make tequila. 
this guy was a was a was a uh, a pot smuggler from way back. Okay, he was part of the Santa Barbara crew. He went down there because he knew Mexico pretty well, and he introduced this guy, uh, the other one, to the whole idea of this patron. Okay, and that started adding to the fortune that the guy already had from all the shampoos because that's where he made his money. Now, the Hells Angels loaning anybody $100,000 to build an electric car, you're out of your fucking mind. <laughs> I'd be oh, surprised. I mean, I'm not uh, calling you a liar, but I'd be surprised on that one. He acquired 17 investing <clears throat> partners. <laughs> well, I seriously doubt if it was the HA unless it was an individual member. Okay, because the club does not invest. And as far as the club being mad at uh, John Paul and Michelle, I seriously doubt that. The guy was in the okay. San Fernando Valley Clubhouse two and a half years ago. Okay? So and there's no – and his partner's long gone. His partner – I asked him about his partner because I knew his partner. I sold the guy a 560 SL Mercedes and a, uh, a Mercedes uh, – uh, like a speedster, a Cabriolet. And that was in – 90, somewhere around 97. And uh, I asked uh, John Paul, whatever the fuck his name is, I said, hey, what about your partner? The guy I met, you know, you 20 some odd years ago. I, the guy got teared up and he said the guy passed. Well, it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> um, John's daughter, yeah. Alexis, uh, jumped out of uh, being a funny car driver. Smart, smart choice. Yeah, you're right. Good, good way to die. Yeah. Uh, well, there's, there's a thousand ways to die. I don't think any of them. You know, there. speaking of Hell's Angels, I always think of that time they went after and that whole bit with Evil Knievel they had with that jump where they were there and that fight broke out and all that. Well, who who knows? You know, I mean, I wasn't there. I didn't hear about it, but anything's possible. I can tell you some well, good things. I can tell you some of the good things. When Willie Nelson was going to get his uh, ranch taken away and his tour buses and all his guitars and all yeah. the man's livelihood by the IRS, the IRS yeah. loaned on Willie, I think it was $120 million. It was a huge amount of money. And they, they yeah. went there, and they were going to auction off all this shit. Well, I can tell you this, that the brothers in the HA went to Willie's house, stood outside the gate, and told everybody that didn't know Willie personally as a friend that it was a private auction. And you know how much Willie got his shit back for? Probably about $110. And every time <laughs> Willie's on tour and he's up in the Bay Area, he'll always stop by. I never heard that story, Sid. That's True cool. fucking story. Huh? Cool. That's what we like. True fucking stories. No way's ever oh, yeah. cool <laughs> dynamite. That's news. Like it, I always say yeah. about every, Justice News Willie Network, tours, pursue the truth. Every time Willie tours California and he's in the Bay Area, he'll stop over to the Oakland Clubhouse and he'll do a little little song or something. He'll have some some drinks at the bar, light up a joint with the guys. I can tell you that. He's a good man. Good. Man of respect. Yeah. Well, um, cool. So are we coming up on break? Hello. Hello. Well, <laughs> are we uh, coming up on a break? We know we don't I'm want to break. Trump. I'll be we back. Are we sure? <laughs> <laughs> Is anybody there? <laughs> no, uh, guess not. No, no, I haven't got an answer yet. So, oh, uh, well, sorry, hey. didn't, just didn't we, want us we to. We know we don't on. want Trump. We know we don't want Biden. So who we got left? Bernie Sanders, okay. And you got Indiana, nobody. Baltimore. You got Bernie. You got Bernie and Tulsi Gabbard. Would That's anyone here vote for Biden? Would anyone on this episode vote for Biden? Not me. Nope. Oh, I got the dirt on him. So I can't do oh, it. Oh yeah, you know he's well. backing him now. It's Michael. You know. I can't do it. I I I, I don't have it in me. <laughs> to do what? Vote for Biden? Yeah, I just don't have, after the PLRA, after everything he's done for, you know, everything he's law. done for the rich, greedy guts, the fact that he put how many billions of dollars in his pocket. Yeah. For, well, Bernie, turn, him, 
the, the Ernie tore him apart last night. There, and, uh, it, don't matter. He just, it doesn't matter. Biden is going to win, and he's going to bring Hillary in as a VP. Biden's right. going to step down within two years because he doesn't have the mental capacity. He's mm-hmm. 70. He'll be 78 years old when he's sworn in. And two yeah. years, he'll be 80. I can tell you, all yeah. the guys I know that turned 80, the brains get soft. I mean, they're wonderful people. I'm not taking that away from them. Yeah. But there's a big difference between 70, 75, and 80. Biden will step down. Hillary is uh, right now 72 years old or 75. Well, that goes, and uh, there goes our country still. <laughs> she was born in 47, so she's probably 73. Yeah. Huh. Wow. Uh, yeah, you nailed that about five or six weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah, I did. They're gonna run. They're gonna run Sanders the hell out of here, and they're yep. gonna put in uh, Biden and Hillary. That's it. That's a dumb deal. Yep. Yeah. I see it coming. I want to hear what that guy knows about Biden. Stop talking about. <laughs> okay. Well, thank, thanks for listening, and we're going to a commercial break, and we'll be right back with Street Justice on BBM Global and. Pirate Radio Network. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the BBM Global Network. Introducing BetterHomeAndGarden.com. That's www.BetterHomeAndGarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. BetterHomeAndGarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, BetterHomeAndGarden.com. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor covering, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. Have you ever wondered why some children recover from their symptoms of autism while others never seem to get any better? After 13 years of research, Karen Thomas has recovered her own son from his symptoms of autism naturally. She now shares how she did it with you in her free webinar so that you can have the right resources and knowledge to help your child. The definition of recovery is to regain health. Karen offers this to you in four stages. Healing the gut, natural heavy metal detoxification, balancing the co-infections of autism, brain support, and repair. Register now for this free webinar to help you know what you can do to help your child to sleep better, be more calm, improve focus, and reach their fullest potential to live a happy, healthy life. Go to naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash free workshop empowering parents with the resources to naturally recover autism from a mom who's done it larry levine self-taught in criminal law and tired of seeing people getting ripped off or burned by the system is ready to talk one-on-one with you it's not about who's right or wrong it's who's a better liar and now the host of street justice larry levine Talk, Larry. No, oh, I thought you had this one, Sid. Well, this is Larry, Larry and 
part of the chaos of the chaos crew stumbling around. Anyway, uh, welcome back for our final segment. And boy, we've been all over the board today. And uh, Sid, yep. back to you. Hey, do you, you, you hear about Lori Laughlin's case? I was in the uh, the checkout line today, and there was something in the corner about uh, amazing new legal well, development. Well, amazing new, what the amazing new every everything is, is somehow uh, it came out that uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Rick San, San San, the guy the guy who's the head conspirator, the, the ringleader. Of all this, yeah, I, I don't, I don't Solomon, have that by no, by names. Yeah. Anyhow, he came out and he said, or, or the lawyer got told that he was told by the FBI to go and basically entrap these people and lie. That that she wow. her her defense, her whole defense hinges on the fact that she claims that wow. five hundred thousand dollar payment. <laughs> <laughs> the the five hundred thousand dollar payment was uh you know gonna be a donation to the school. And he basically uh while they were recording said, Well, you know this really isn't that or blah blah blah. You know. So that that's what they're hanging that whole thing on. Really? Wow. Yep. And as groupy as the courts are nowadays. Who knows? Maybe uh, her gamble's going to pay off. Maybe she'll walk, or at least not get a full conviction. Yeah. It's very yeah. sad, but no one got it. It's possible. <clears throat> and you know that's probably the way it went down. Well, of course it's the way it went <laughs> down. <laughs> <laughs> you think it went down? Of course it's the way it went down. It went down. <laughs> The feds were there with a piece of paper in front of the guy and go, look, you want all that downward departure? You want to go do a year or two? Or do you want to do 10 or 20? All you got to do is say this. We need an yeah. trappable We need an trappable speech. Of course it went yep. down like that. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> did, I, did I tell you the time when I was with Larry at MDCLA? So I'm with Larry mm. in FDCLA. We're having such a good time. And all of a sudden, I get called down in the middle of the day to visiting. Well, it's not visiting hours. And I got no attorney coming to see me. I got nobody coming to see me. So they say, nope, you got to go down uh, to the such and such floor. Well, the such and such floor was where the law library was. Right That's where the law library was and some other facility. So I go down to that floor. And there's two guys in a couple of suits waiting for me. All right, who the fuck are these guys? Well, they're suits, so obviously they're they're cops or feds or whatever. They were the Orange County Organized Crime Task Force. And yeah. The guys wanted to talk to me about some of my associates, people I knew. And I said, well, I'm not saying a fucking word talking to you guys or anything. Unless, unless... You get me a couple of double double cheeseburgers and some French fries. So, <laughs> you know, just like magic, just like magic, <laughs> some <laughs> double double cheeseburgers and French fries show up. <laughs> so, so I'm eating the French fries and the cheeseburgers, and I'm happy, man. I got me some real food in jail. So now they whip out this big photo book, and they go, "Can you identify some of the people in this book?" They start with the pages. Ooh, what about this guy? Yeah, I know that guy. What does he do? Oh, that guy buys cars from me. <laughs> <laughs> I know that guy. What about this guy? This guy. They're going through the whole book. I'm just, I'm just telling them, you know, like, oh, yeah, I know this guy. I know that guy. Oh, yeah, I sold him this car. You know, he bought that car. <laughs> and the guy goes, no, no, we want to know about drugs. We want to know about shootings. We want to know about... I thought I don't know what the Yeah, fuck I don't know anything about, about all that. <laughs> I don't know anything about that. <laughs> Anyhow, at least I got a couple of cheeseburgers and some French fries out of the deal. 
You should yeah. go for steak and lobster, my friend. <laughs> uh, I'm afraid steak and lobster is probably a little far on the menu when you're in MDCLA. Getting a couple of yeah. cheeseburgers and french fries, that's just like fucking steak and lobster. But, but you know in and out is doable. I don't know if you've ever done any jail time, but I got to tell you, a double-double cheeseburger and some french fries I know. pretty good. I know. You know, I went five and a half years without seeing a fucking pizza. You know what that's like? Five and a half years without seeing a goddamn pizza? Yeah, tell me about it. Mm. Right. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I do not. Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, that that was the worst. That wasn't the worst of it, but you know, you can imagine. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. J- jail, as Larry will tell you, is no fun. But it is a good place to have a self-conversation with yourself and do some productive things. Larry came out. He self-educated himself in the law. He was there every day in the law library. He was reading uh, law papers. He was reading cases. So Larry took his time, and he used it to his advantage. There was some Italian boys that I knew, you know, from back in the East Coast, and they spent their days playing card games and gambling on the TV. Me, I just backed the uh, fantasy football league, so I made nothing but money, but I didn't gamble. Mm. And I didn't waste my time with, with card games. You know, when you go to any of these places, like Larry will tell you, and I'm sure he's giving people advice because he's a prison consultant, and he's pretty damn good at it, to be honest with you. Yeah. Larry will tell you, going to, going to prison is like being a package being put on the shelf at the post office. Only you ain't getting mailed out. Yep. <laughs> until uh, that sucker date comes up. <laughs> and until that date shows up, you're right there on the shelf. So it's pretty mm-hmm. boring. The boredom is is hard to overcome, so you have to find ways to keep your mind active or your mind right. going to much. You know? And, you know, like Larry's a real analytical guy. Yeah. Really. Always has been. Well, and, uh, when you're out here on the streets, it's the same thing. Read every day. Educate yourself every day. Stay informed every day. It doesn't matter your opinion. All of us have opinions. They're like assholes. Everybody gets one of them. Yeah, stuff. everybody has The one. thing is, is there's going to be guys that you know that love Trump. I got many, many friends of mine that I've known my entire life. They think they think this guy walks on water. And no, he doesn't. There's many, <laughs> there's many, many people that are going to say, no, Bernie's a true warrior for the American people. He's true in that. And other people come at you and they'll go, no, he's a communist. He's a socialist. You know, people love to hang labels. But fuck all that. You as yourself must stay focused. You must be optimistic. You must learn knowledge every day and strive for inner peace of spirit. That's what's important. Well, wow, you hit it shit. on the head, too, because um, that's the problem with the world. You know, it's like you and I can disagree or agree to disagree, put it that way, but it's learning the knowledge and knowing what you're talking about, not coming like an idiot. And we have too much of that in the world, unfortunately. And then it's like you said with labels. Everybody wants to label, but when you go deep down inside, I know at times, for example, People may, or Larry puts on one persona, and I know he's a very, and I'm not saying this to kiss his rear end, I'm just being factual, I know he's done and gone through a lot, and some people I know who really know him, they've made that very clear, just like what you just said. He went to the library, he used his time, he got ahead, and he knows what he's talking about, and he's doing very well going around, and as he'll say, talking shit all the time on so-and-so. Let me just say this about my good friend Larry. Larry sure. tells you, I'm an asshole. Everybody knows I'm an asshole. And he put, he likes to portray and put that persona out there. But the Larry I know is a mm-hmm. respectful, great man with a heart of gold. That's the yep. guy I know. That's and I smart know as that fuck. Through, and, <laughs> oh, I agree. And, I haven't got that for And two I know seconds. that because we've been in some really hairy situations together. And Larry yeah. will always have your back. He's yep. that kind of guy. So even though he puts out that projection, I'm an animal oh, and blah, blah, blah. Believe me, the real Larry 
is a solid sure. gold guy under me. And you can't say that. You're absolutely me. right. One hundred percent. The problem is right now is we're way too decisive in this country. We're tearing at each yeah. other. We're labeling each other. Yeah. Listen, we're one step away from killing each other. We got to put down the guns, put away the animosity, sure. start reaching across yeah. and working with each other. It's our yeah. country, our fucking country. We're all fucking Americans here. The well, you see, that's, that's the sad part. That, you see, that's, you're absolutely right, but that's the sad part. Because it's like when I watched a Democratic debate, they say if these guys go and start tearing each other apart and doing certain things, which was true, I just watched Bernie do that last night. I may not agree with everything with Bernie, but the bottom line is that him starting to do that, then everybody else is going to do the same thing. But, of course, all politicians basically do that, and it keeps uh, everybody apart because if everybody came together and made a positive difference, a lot of the problems we have in our world would not exist anymore. This is an extremely rich country with deep yeah. resources, and our strongest resource is our our people. Okay, yeah. no matter what yeah. walks of life, what religion, yeah. what color, this is our strongest resource. This is what That's people right. in the world backs everything on America. Donald Trump mm -hmm. is a temporary person. All these politicians. Whether it's a DNC or an RNC, they work for one group, the upper yep. group, okay? Yep. And if we call them them and they and this and that. But believe me, it's the fucking money that runs shit and it runs it downhill. We need yeah. to change the political system. We oh, need I a know. third party. We I, need to go, I agree it needs to change, believe old, me. And been there more than 20 years, they should be out the fucking door. They should oh, be I agree. Washington, their lifetime career that they hand to their children and their grandchildren. <laughs> Fuck that. We need fresh, young people with fresh, strong ideas. We need a leader, a warrior. Bernie's an old guy, but believe me, I checked out his history. He's a clean old guy. You call him a cop, yeah. call him a culture. Call him whatever, but he's at least fighting for the right people. He ain't up there yeah. fighting for corporations and billionaires. He's out there fighting yeah. for the everyday fuck. Yeah. But the DNC will have you their, close out have their way. All right, good night, guys. Love y'all. Tune in next week for more straight up, no holds barred talk from the host of Street Justice, Larry Levine. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.